What is going on there, kings, queens, and everybody in between? It's your boy, B-Plus Effort, back in the saddle with yet another video. And today, we're going to be giving player first games, not just a taste, not just a peek, not just a look, not just a glimpse, but a full-blown theater production on Multiverse's official release and beyond. So first up, let's just talk about the positives, because there are a few. That's right. I'm not a content creator who's just going to sit up here, stir the pot, and be a negative Nancy, because folks, let's give credit where it's due. The connectivity issues from the beta were improved upon official release and from official release all the way up to 1.04 i've had less laggy games i've had significantly less desynchronized games actually since 1.04 dropped i haven't had a single one now this could be that the servers are just less congested because enough people have dropped the game to the point to where the servers can just be stable throughout the entirety of the day just as much as it could be that player first games really locked in and made sure that the quality of matches for the average player regardless of system because i remember when the game first came out in official release on xbox that was unplayable but now it's gotten better and not only that crossplay has never been better in this game than it is right now so shout outs to player first games for that and here comes probably the most controversial thing I'll say during the entirety of this video. I'm actually gonna put balancing in the positive section because their approach to balancing isn't one that I hate. It's a slow and steady subset of changes while acknowledging even in the patch notes that we are aware of more issues coming. They know that they still have to touch Shaggy. They know they still gotta touch bugs. They know that some of these top tiers are gonna come down even further, but they just wanna try this for now and they wanted to communicate that and be transparent with the players. So I thank Player First Games for doing that because a lot of games, they don't let you see the vision. And we saw this reflected in the side attack dodge changes that we saw from the last patch. So jokers and other characters can't just do jab, jab, dodge, jab, jab, dodge, jab, jab, dodge, looping you for 35% without much skill or effort. And we also saw this reflected in the nerves and changes to Gizmo and Harley and to a lesser extent, Bugs and Shaggy. But speaking of dodging, due to the changes that the dodge mechanic went under with the dodge meter, burnout, etc., the game is a lot less of a dodge fest now as it was compared to the beta build, and it forces players to interact more with each other than just running around and just doing things that are heavy committal, but then you can just turn them no committal with a press of a button. Now, I think there are some moves that should be heavy committal and shouldn't be as safe as they are, but, you know, breadcrumb our way to success, you know, small baby steps. As for the battle pass, as we already know, at 1.0, it was a super Omega grind, but the developers of Player First Games, they heard our cries, they heard our pleas, and now not only is Gleemium earnable in the game, you actually get battle pass XP for each online battle. So somebody out there is paying attention to the woes of the community. And they've been on record to say they are amendable to increasing and bumping those numbers up just to see how it shakes up with the in-game economy. And now for the part that a lot of you have been waiting for. Now for the part that many of you at home in the comment section below will probably have been calling your main event of the evening. Folks, it is time to talk about the nitty, the gritty, the darkness known as the negatives. Because folks, where do I begin? I do not understand how a game can come out as a beta, be tested for months, have parts, features, and modes that are universally praised and respected. Just get removed and gutted from the game upon official release. Remember that whole thing where you could swap neutral and side attacks? Uh -uh. Removed. Some characters got their signature perks. Removed. Co-op versus AI mode. Removed. After battle stats, which I don't understand why you, who would not want to see how many KOs they had? Were like people afraid they would get cyber bullied because, oh, look, I got four KOs and you got nothing, loser. Like, I, I'm not understanding why you would get rid of that when the game can clearly track it. Training mode quick reset is gone. Now we have this weird loading screen thing that has to pop up for a couple of seconds. And speaking of the gosh darn training mode, how is it? Yes, I'm hitting my desk to punctuate this point. How is it that the bot still can't tack on frame one so I can actually know if the combos that I'm doing are true or for Boo Boo the Fool? Because I am getting sick and tired of being like, wow, this looks really cool. I think I like it. And then suddenly it just don't work because a human player mashing dodge is just going to fall right out of it. Free-for-all mode is gone. Ranked mode is gone. Perks can't be changed between rematches outside of the custom presets that you already have made. Which means, if you run into a character and you're like, oh, this guy's running Superman. Let me go switch this one perk out for the armor-brusting perk. You can't do that. 
unless you already have a pre-made anti-Superman build. And speaking of perks, they limited player expression, they ruined creativity, because a lot of the more popular perks, like the ones that address cooldowns, the one that gave you a triple jump, all were removed because reasons, I guess? Because I remember CoffeeZilla, Clear the Air, the Ice perk, and various others that just allowed you to have more control, ingenuity, and creative ideas for your character. I'm not saying that this was necessarily a deal breaker, but it does kind of suck that a lot of people were sucked in in the beta due to these systems that were at play. And now upon official release, they're just not there. And listen, I didn't want to make the perk section so long, but we need to talk about it. The fact that in the beta, there was this cool little feature of, hey, I don't have that perk unlocked, but my teammate does. And I want to have the affinity bonus. Well, because they have it unlocked, I too can equip that perk so we can get the affinity bonus on it. So I can kind of agree to try to play to some of their strengths or maybe my teammate would also like to play to some of my strengths depending on the matchup. And I still think it's a little corny that we have to unlock each part individually for each character on the cast. So we would have to buy, let's say there's 26 characters in the game and there's a specific build we like to play universally. We would have to buy each of those perks 26 times. I think that's a little bit ridiculous, but that's okay though, because I still have over 100K perk points. I'm never gonna lose these perk points. We have too many perk points. And the fact that they think a good reward for a top dog challenge is 6,000 perk points is ridiculous because anybody who would grind to the point to where they are the best out of any 50 players, trust me when I tell you, anyone who's willing to grind for the top dog spot, the last thing they're gonna need is perk points because I'm sure that person has already got a optimized build for their mains. So what are they gonna be spending the perk points on? And listen, I do not hate the game. I'm just passionate because I want to see this game go to greener pastures. I want to see players be happy and enjoy things more. And I feel like these are a lot of the places where they could actually pick up some of the slack. Now, that being said, you may call me a hater. You may call me a saboteur. You may even call me a turncoat, but I'm gonna tell you this right now. The rifts mode, I am not gonna lie to you. This is not only just a small, not just a big, not just a kind of hefty. This is a massive L and it's not because I'm a hater. I've had a huge rant about this mode in the fall of 2023. And I can hear some of y'all going crazy in the comment section right now. B plus effort, why are you lying? You weren't invited to any of the private test betas. So what do you mean 2023 in the fall? You couldn't have talked about it then. Actually, dear viewer, I have. Sit down, shut up and let me school you. Because you say that it didn't exist. You're right. But WB had tried this with another game that you may have seen on this channel. Stop me if you heard this one before. A game mode with a web of stages that pits you against all types of variants of characters throughout the multiverse and timelines of all the IPs involved. Sprinkling in intermittent battles with challenges and mini games. Having some stages be completely gatekept, not by skill, not by ingenuity, not by player creativity. No, no, no but because your level of your items or characters just simply was not high enough. And if they're not high enough, there's literally nothing you can do to actually make progress on the mode. I have to use the fart. I have to knock him backwards into the fart or I'm dead. Oh no. ARE YOU KIDDING ME?! I can't even restart it. I'm done. I'm not playing anymore. Bye. I literally couldn't do anything. It's not even a laughing matter. Literally the most unfun shit I've ever seen in my life. Don't go into this mode. Don't pick this tower. Because it's not a skill expression thing. It's just bullshit. Okay, man, but I have to be on this side. Like, what the fuck? If this sounds familiar to you, it's because you heard me give this rant on stream at twitch.tv slash B plus effort. You should follow it, by the way. About Mortal Kombat 1's Invasions mode. That's right, folks. Multiverses did not cook and create this one. This was one of the Krabby Patty's secret formula ingredients to how to make me very annoyed. Because as much as the Mortal Kombat community hated that mode, it was kind of painful, just a little bit, to see one of the most egregiously repetitive and tedious modes not only come back in multiverses, but they somehow made it 10 times more of a grind fest with little to no tangible reward. 
it's not even a skill check. It's usually, did you find a cheese strat? Or did you pay enough money to be so far over level to the level of difficulty that you decided to play on? Or did you just pay money to do it? Did you just give them 5,000 gleamium? Did you give them $50 to just upgrade your gems to level six so you can just coast through most of the modes? Because when you're over leveled, it's not even a challenge. You two tap everybody. So at some point you gotta ask, who was this mode really for? You know, who was it for? Cause it's not for me. And don't get me wrong, while some of the mini games can be fun, there is not anything keeping me wanting to go back and try at higher difficulties. And the last elephant in the room issue that we need to address is I know a lot of people are saying that this game is more of a cash grab by having the prestige store where you have to spend money and then actually buy items that you may not want in order to get prestige points so you can buy some of the items of the prestige store that you do want. And on top of that, why is it that if I complete an achievement or an accomplishment on Xbox, PlayStation, or even Steam, and I complete the objective, you know what it does? It just gives it to me. It says, hey, you did it, and it gives it to you. However, in multiverses for some reason, if I complete a milestone, if I don't manually go and check them and then click the claim button, I will never get them, even though I did them. That is stupid. There should be an auto claim feature. It should pop up, hey, this is what you did, and auto claim them. That is ridiculous to me. What the fuck is this piece of shit? Now for the gameplay negatives, and this is something that I have brought up in the comment section a few times with some people saying, hey, how do you do that? Hey, how do you do this? Hey, how do you do that? Hey, that looked pretty cool. How did you do that combo? And the problem is, Player First Games has done a relatively poor job in telling us what they want their game to be. Now, don't get me wrong, in the positive section, I did highlight the fact that they're pretty transparent about what characters need to be touched, what will be touched in the future in terms of character specific things. However, when it comes to system mechanics, something that we find really cool that allows us to showcase our skill with a character today may not even be in the game next week. And it's unfortunate that some people will learn combos about, oh yeah, I know how to do the dodge loops, but they're like, we don't want loops, so they get rid of it. And we're just a couple dodge changes away to where combos like the one that you see on the screen right now will not be possible, which will leave some characters kind of lacking in the sauce department. Because let's be honest, if Garnet's not doing this, all she is is a jab bot. And like, who wants to be a side attack jab bot the entirety of them? Like, wouldn't you get bored? Exactly. You don't even see Garnet too much now because one, they got rid of her best perk. It's out of the game because there was a cheese trap with it. And instead of finding a way to, oh, I don't know, make sure that if it goes into the blast zone, it disappears. They just removed the perk entirely, which gives a lot of her space control up, which means folks, if you're a Garnet player, I am so sorry for you right now. You, you are in chat, y'all are going through it. And I can't stress this enough. I am glad I got my Garnet video out when I did. Now, the last thing I wanted to say is a lot of people really enjoyed what they played in the multiverses beta. And I believe that was a completely different game. Like a lot of the things from movement to how fast it was, to how like there was a lot of execution barriers in terms of having really good movement. And a lot of that has been taken away in the official release of the game. So somebody who liked the beta, there's a good chance that they play this game and they're like, what is this slop jalop? Why is it so slow? Like it's fundamentally at a base level, substantially different to the point to where someone would just be like, yeah, I don't, I don't really jive with this. And I could see them just going back to whatever other game that would be occupying their time. And it is unfortunate because I have a couple of friends who have walked away from the game and don't play anymore for that specific reason. They liked Wonder Woman being able to zip, zap, zoop, bop all over the screen, but now they have to play a more not necessarily grounded game because Wonder Woman is still bonkers, but it is clearly not the same realm nor stratosphere as the movement we had in the beta. So I'm not sure what player first games could even do to get them back. Maybe you just have to cut your losses on that and just accept that, hey, maybe this new version just isn't for you. And on one hand, I completely get that. On the other hand, I mean, you shouldn't have showed us that and then taken it away because in some aspects, I feel like official release is more of a beta than the beta ever was. But comment section, this is where you guys do your thing and you guys tell me, do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you hate invasions? I mean, sorry, rifts mode as much as I do. And if you didn't know about invasions mode in Mortal Kombat 1, 
What do you think about Warner Brothers doing it not once, but twice? And it still sucks. And I know some of y'all have gotten to this point in this video and you thought that I was going to let them off the hook for Iron Giant. Ah, there's no way that y'all let this chrome dome piece of garbage come into our game, touch a deathless, get rid of them, say, hey guys, we solved the problem. Pat us on the back. Round of applause, please. And then he comes back and he's got two more touch of deaths that were even easier than the ones you got rid of. And you know, I'm not trying to say that the whole gigantic fighter thing isn't a neat concept, but make sure that Godzilla, King Kong, Iron Giant, Optimus Prime, whoever you're putting in this game who's gonna be a big, big, is just out of competitive. Just make sure they can't be played and ranked and we'll be fine. Because the stuff that this character can do, the way that this character doesn't even function and is even playing the same game that the rest of the cast is forced to play is insane. It's nonsensical. I'm not gonna go too long on a diatribe about it because we've, anyways, I've been B plus effort. I'll catch you guys next time. Uh, I don't know who the next character we're gonna play is. I saw people say they wanted Taz and some people wanted Arya. So we'll like flip a coin or something. But till then guys, y'all be safe. I'm outie.